All right, so Mr. Gardner, I think you skipped uh, item 6A3. Yep. That was deliberate uh, because I wanted to save the best for last. If you look at that report, you will see that it's the shortest comment on the items. And I, it never occurred to me that that would be the subject that the press would latch on to. I spent most of Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, I guess it was, talking to no less than nine reporters about the cats. And so I want to make it clear for the record that we need to celebrate and honor these cats because while they have created somewhat of a nuisance for us, they have done a superior job of getting rid of all other rodents. Uh, Nicole said she hadn't seen a rodent in two years. So our feral cats have been uh, working very hard um, and have been very successful. They have multiplied though in numbers. And so now we need to devise a plan that we can at least control the population. And we have been working with the city of Oakland's animal control department. In fact, I think we have a meeting this afternoon uh, to talk further about what strategies we might employ. Uh, I had put out the idea of maybe an adoption program and have since learned that uh, that probably would only be successful for the kittens. Uh, the adults uh, are already, uh, they've already developed their skills and they're not likely to be successfully adopted. So we're looking at a, a variety of strategies, but one of them is, and the A's have offered that they would help if we had an adoption program, particularly for the kittens. So that's one of the things that we will be doing. Um, we've also been advised by the city that one of the things we can do, and I say it in the report, is to make sure that our dumpsters are secure and we can do a better job of that. But the reality is that when we have events and people bring whatever they didn't finish eating and dump it on the ground, uh, it's not just the dumpsters. So anyway, we think we will get this under control. We can live with the cats. Uh, they do good work, uh, but... Uh, we need to deactivate some of them. We don't need quite as many as we've got on duty right now. Um, we, early in the morning, we find them sometimes sitting in the go-karts, in the driver's seat, like they're ready to go on rodent patrol. <laughs> but anyway, I, I put that in there just in case you heard anything from any patrons about feral cats running around. But I, it never occurred to me that the press would latch on to that and that became the story. In fact, I was told there was a story this morning still about the cats, but it's a good, it's a good news story, so. Well, thank you, Mr. Gardner, for that, uh, that report. Uh, yeah, I just want to state that uh, I, I was quite surprised myself, you know, 10 years on the Oakland City Council, 20 plus years as a county supervisor, so more than 30 years in government and I was quite surprised when the, pr the press started contacting my office for me to give them comments on feral cats out at the Coliseum. Um, clearly, I didn't have the time to be speaking to that matter. So I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that you took on that assignment and did it extremely well. I created the problem. <laughs> so let's see if there's other uh, comments from uh, commissioners. Uh, yes, well, certainly glad that it's cut down on the rats. And um, as it's almost Passover, I hope we won't get into a spiral of then we bring in dogs to chase the cats and then we bring in what lions to chase the dogs and we could have an entire uh, chain, perhaps uh, ending with a goat. Um, but, but I did wanna say that I did talk to Oakland Animal Services and uh, they recommend that for the, the older cats that the, the goal should be to spay and neuter as many of them as possible. And that also, as I see, we have a fair number of the press on the line with us today. The Oakland Animal Services also said it's really important to remind the public to spay and neuter their pets. So for the media watching and for members of the public watching, please make sure to spay and neuter their pets and to remind people not to adopt pets that they don't then care for and maintain. 
uh, as there may be some number of abandoned pets uh, that has transpired in recent year. Uh, but for but they we they recommended looking at spaying and neutering as many as possible in, in our facility, as well as the catching and adopting of the kittens, um, and urging the public uh, to spay and neuter their pets. Uh, in addition to the uh, sharing of doing what we can to seal the garbage uh, to prevent attracting them. Um, and and thank you. Uh, for this and um, your your break break from talking about sickness and disease to talking about cats. So thank you. Uh, Zinni Abram of Zinni 62 Media. I just want to note that I'm proud to report that the black owned media in Oakland, Oakland News Now, owned by Zinni 62 Media and the Oakland Post did not focus on a story regarding feral cats as a top story regarding the Coliseum when the Coliseum has a loss of roughly 200 million due to a change in fund balance among other problems. It's also a good idea to say to the public how they should treat the matter of spotting these cats at games. Are they allowed to take them out or what? I mean, it's one thing to you know, focus on this in a humorous way because you know eight to 10 media organizations that are white owned are focused on them being blunt. But the reality is that you've created a situation of focus on those cats that could create an untenable problem that you didn't anticipate. So uh, I think that needs to be handled. And um, uh, I just want to speak that and remind you that, you know, there's a different kind of press too, that you spend a lot of time ignoring. Okay, thank you. This is Colette Lucas Conwell with the Oakland A's. We just wanted to say that we're happy to support the JPA and Henry Gardner in whichever ways needed. Um, you know, like Zenny said, if there's any communication that we can share during games, please let us know. We're happy to do that. Um, and, you know, as long as the cats are adoptable, we're happy to work with the JPA, any local nonprofits to host some kind of, you know, Coliseum kittens um, adoption drive. So just keep us in the loop. I know that David Brunetti, our stadium operations vice president, will be at the meeting at 3 p.m. today. So I think Henry, you know, he'll be there just send him any information his way. Thanks. Uh, as I said, the, the feral cats have been contributors. Uh, need to be real clear about that. And so the approach as to how to uh, manage them in a humane way so that they're not being disruptive. That's the story. Yes, I just wanted to share. Uh, we did hear from uh, Director Dunn uh, just regarding, and, and perhaps we can have the clarity on this, Mr. Gardner, re regarding adoption. She had indicated that the cats were not socialized to people, so it could become a concern or an issue to place them up for adoption. And so I think we might need to get some more insight on, on that uh, path that's being considered. I think there is general consensus um, that uh, feral cats generally are not, su are, are not subjects for adoption. It really would be the kittens. And uh, Vice Chair uh, Kaplan addressed the other part that I had left out, that the spaying and neutering uh, are an important part of the strategy of controlling the population. But probably only the, kit only the kittens really would be eligible for adoption. I, I believe there's more to be considered relative to this issue of the feral cats. Mr. Gardner will report back to us at our at our next JPA meeting on, on this. Yeah, yeah, sorry if we made light of it, because I do recognize that it is, it is an issue for both the, the team and then uh, for folks who feel uh, concerned about the welfare of animals. Okay.